Hello. As you come in, go ahead and share this live stream. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for logging in. Thank you for joining this Facebook Live, this time of empowerment and encouragement. Welcome all destiny travelers. As you come in, if you're watching live or you're watching the replay, log on and let me know where you're watching from. Today, I want to talk to you about the will of God, how to manifest the will of God. How do we manifest the will of God? I was sitting in prayer and I was asking the Holy Spirit what he wanted to um, share today. And the topic of manifesting the will of God um, began to ring in my spirit. So we're following the leadership of Holy Spirit and we're going to address how to manifest the will of God. As you come in, Destiny Travelers, go ahead and say hello. Let us know where you are watching from. Good morning, Mother. Thank you for joining. Share this live stream to your networks, to your friends. Invite somebody on. I know oftentimes a lot of individuals um, are plagued with the idea or the question, am I in the will of God? Am I walking in what God wants me to do? Am I uh, marrying the person that God wants me to marry? Am I doing the things that God wants me to do? So today we're going to address those topics. And I believe we'll finish this up on Friday when we come in at 715 um, Central Standard Time on Friday, Wednesdays and Fridays as we um, do follow that schedule. Good morning, Yolanda. Thank you for joining Good morning, Issa. Thank you for joining, guys. As you come in, go ahead and share um, this broadcast to your timeline, to your friends, to your networks. Um, how to manifest the will of God. Oftentimes, I um, speak with people, or should I say throughout the years, I've spoken with people, and they're unaware or don't know what the will of God is for their lives. So today, I want to kind of shed light on how to manifest the will of God. Type that in the comments, how to manifest the will of God, because we are spiritual beings. And because when we accepted Jesus Christ, we became new creations with the power of God in the person of Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of our regenerated spirit. So now we have divine access to God through the person of Holy Spirit. And because we are spiritual beings and because we are supernatural in nature, we should be able to manifest the will of God. I know that word manifest in our current culture has been used so widely in the new age movement and all of these mixtures that are going on, but we have to begin to show forth to manifest, to bring into reality the will of God for our lives, for our cities, for our businesses, for our towns, for our nations, for everything that God has concerning us. We as new creations in Christ Jesus should be able to get in full alignment with God to manifest bring into reality the will of God for our lives. So how do we do that as new created beings? Well, we have to understand what is God's will. God's will is his sovereign actions. Type that out. God's will is his sovereign actions. What God's intention is. What is God's intention for your life? What is God's intention for humanity? What is God's intention for the world at large? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your motives and your intentions towards us. Thank you for your love and kindness and your tender mercy. I pray, Father, that everyone that you have 
ordained to hear this message will be empowered. Holy Spirit, we invite you to lead us and guide us into all truth. I pray that the hearers will be empowered. I pray, Father, that even as my voice is being used, that I am empowered to walk out your sovereign will and a fire will be placed in those that hear this message to walk out and discover the will of God for their individual lives in Jesus's name. Amen. Okay. So how to manifest the will of God, knowing the will of God for your life is vital. It's vital to your position and it's vital to the fulfillment of your assignment in earth. The will of God is God's intention for you, God's intention for humanity, God's intention for the world at large. What is God's intention and God's actions in carrying in, carrying that out? That is the will of God. God's will can be sovereign. God's will can be predetermined. Sovereign means he acts according to his own will. We see in the beginning of time, God said, let us make man in our own image. God didn't need the participation of man. God acted sovereignly and created man. God had an intention and an action. God wanted to create man, a new class of being. Um, God wanted to act sovereignly out of their own will. God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy Spirit. So we see that the will of God can act without man. The will of God is also predetermined. We see that scriptorially where Jesus was prophesied of and the, the works that he would do and the mission that he would accomplish in the earth was prophesied of prior to his arrival. We see where Isaiah prophesied of the sovereign Lord. We see types and shadows of Jesus Christ. And here in the New Testament, Jesus comes on the scene and begins to fulfill the predetermined determined will of God. Type the sovereign will, the predetermined will. So then there is a cooperation or a participation that we too can have in the fulfillment of God's will. So we also have a will outside of God's will. We can manifest God's will, but we also have our very own will my will. And one of the things that we have to understand is God gives us all a free will. God created man with a free will. He had the power of acting without constraint. He had the power of acting out of necessity or faith, the ability to act at one's own discretion. Our free will can be given readily or voluntarily. Thank you guys for joining. Make sure you share this video. So we have God's will, which is sovereign, predetermined, or um, cooperation, participation with humanity. And then we have our very own will. We act our, out of our own will and our own desires um, we act according to our own constraint. We act according to our own ability at our own discretion. So God gave man this ability that we are not robots. We don't have to yield to the will of God. We don't have to yield to the sovereign will. We don't have to yield to the predetermined will. We don't have to yield to God's will. We willingly give our will over to the will of God, to God's actions, to God's predetermined course of events for our lives and that around us with our, in our sphere of influence. So the will of God is predetermined, sovereign, in cooperation with man, but man has to willingly yield his will over to the will of God because God gave us the ability to choose, to choose to act according to what we want and what we desire. So man's will, we also have, I threw in this part, we have God's will, we have your own will, but then you have 
uh, a collective man's will. And what we see in man's will is cultural opinions. We see worldly systems in man's will. We see um, um, narratives, stereotypes within man's will. And I like to also define this as the fear of man. And the Bible tells us that the fear of man is a snare. So the will is the actions and how to carry things out. The will is the action in how we carry things out. The divine will or perfect will of God may also be known as the living or the kairos moments or the divine appointed times where we have stepped into the divine life and we experience the divine will of God. We experience what Jesus experienced when he started manifesting what was prophetically already written about him. He started manifesting and walking out God's will as it related to scripture that was already predetermined. This is how we have the confirmation of who Jesus Christ was. Well, one of the confirmations of who he was in his um, expression of being the savior of the world because he was prophesied of prior to his arrival. Some of you may have prophetic words over your life, but you have yet to yield to that prophetic word in order to step into the will of God. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. So when we have the will of God, we have to understand all of the components, all of the details in manifesting the will of God that we don't fall into man's will, which is... Um, societies, societal norms, stereotypes, cultural dictates. What does being black dictate concerning my life? Will I fall into that will rather than the will of God? What does being a woman dictate? Will I fall into that will rather than a will of God? The fear of man is entangled with man's will. The cultural dictates what your religious uh affiliation is your denomination. Will you fall into that will rather than God's will concerning you? So we're talking about manifesting the will of God in our very own lives, in our family, in our sphere of influence, in our cities, in our towns, in our nation, how to bring about God's will. We have to understand our assignment and our position in order to manifest God's will. I have to understand what am I called to do in the earth? What is my assignment? How am I going to carry that out? What is my positioning in God's vision? We are all a part of a greater vision. There have many have come before us and fulfill their position in their assignment. So what we have to do within God's vision is find out where our assignment is and what is our position. What are we supposed to do in the great vision of God? How are we supposed to manifest our assignment? How are we supposed to execute this positioning that God has placed us in? Whether you are a mother, a father, a sister, a brother, uh, a niece, a nephew, um, a pastor, an evangelist, a teacher, a construction worker, uh, wherever your position is currently, you have to begin to go before the father and desire what his will is. So that is the first step. The first step in manifesting the will of God is to desire and value his word um, as final authority, we look at the will of God and we have the scriptures, which are the acts of God, which is the sovereign counsel of God, which is the word of God that gives us teaching, correction, edification. It builds us up and instructs us is profitable for righteousness. It can rebuke us. So one of the ways the uh, to manifest that is to desire and value the word as final authority. Do you value God's word? Is there a high precedence on God's word 
the first thing we need to do, because this is what we have, is read what has God done in the past. How do I understand God? I get in his word to find out what he's done previously. I get in his word to find out what his acts are. How did he interact with humanity? That is the first step to learn about him. You can't really follow the will of God if you don't know God. You have to get to know his character, know his ways. The Bible tells us in the Old Testament that Moses knew the ways of God. He knew the character of God. He knew the ins and outs, in, ins and outs of God. But the children of Israel, all they understood was his acts how he performed for them. They didn't get to understand his character. So how do you know the will of God? You got to desire it. You have to want God's will above all else. And you have to place that as final authority. And you have to value his word and you have to value his will. We can find his will in his word. We find his will in his word. Type in the comments, I need to read the word. If you don't read the word, you don't desire it. If you don't read the word, you don't value it because that is how we will find one, the will of God for humanity, the will of God, the um, vision of God. In order to find out where your appointment is and your, your uh, position is, your assignment is, you got to know what is his great vision. His great vision is in his word. As we read his word, we will understand what God's vision is. And then he will be able to properly place us in that vision as an assignment and, and as a position to carry out our part of his greater vision. There has been many apostles, many prophets, many individuals in history that have come along and fulfilled their assignment and stepped into their position with God to fulfill their part of the greater vision. Okay. So manifesting God's will, John chapter 14 and 23 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode in him, Cynthia. So when we enter into a desire for God, when we enter into a place where we value God's word, we will do what he says in it. We will be ones that carry out the word. We will be ones that respect the word. We will be ones that place value upon any time God speaks to us. We won't become apathetic with the things of God. We won't become desensitized or cultural culturized with the things of God. There will be a fear of the Lord and a respect and an awe of God. Proverbs 1 and 6 says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but Fools despise wisdom and instruction. In the Bible, there's wisdom. In the Bible, there's instruction. So when we fear God, we are experiencing the beginning of knowledge. How do you manifest the word of God? How do you manifest the will of God? You have to fear the Lord. You have to fear the Lord so he can download to you the knowledge about your appointment, your positioning, and how to carry that out. When you have a reverence, an awe, a respect for God, God sees that you are one who can be trusted with more. Not only will you have the great vision of God, but God will begin to give you your individual vision for your very life. You'll begin to receive the knowledge of who you are, your positioning in God's great vision and your assignment that you are to carry out. So when you love the Lord, you're going to respect him. You're going to desire his will. You're going to value his word. You're going to value the logos and you're going to value the rhema. Here it is. David, King David didn't kill 
King Saul because he had a respect for God. He had a fear for God. He had a reverence for who God was. David understood authority and positioning. He understood that God was the one to put people in position. And if David, if Saul had this positioning, God was ordaining him for that place. And he understood that he could not touch God's anointed because he had a respect for God. It wasn't so much Saul, though he did respect his kingship, but David said, um, uh, David said, I will not touch God's anointed. That means if the anointing wasn't on Saul, David would have touched him. David was a man of war. David was a man who couldn't even build the temple for God because God told him you have too much blood on your hands. So it wasn't the fact that David was timid in murder and killing people, we see that he killed Uriah, even so much so that David slaughtered the man that killed Saul. Are you hearing me? When you want to manifest, we're talking about manifesting the will of God. How do I manifest this thing? I have to fear the Lord to the degree that I don't put my mouth on people that God is leading. I don't touch God's anointed. He said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Those that God has placed his hand on, those that God has a special work for, an assignment for, I don't touch them. I don't mess with them. I don't talk against them. I don't um, come against them. I don't try to slaughter them, kill them, uh, abort their assignment. I don't allow myself to be a tool that can be used to destroy those that God has a special work for. But here in the body of Christ, we have lost this type of fear and reverence for the Lord. When we don't respect those God is leading, we will never manifest the will of God for our very own lives. Why is that? Because we don't understand God. We don't understand how he operates. We don't understand the greater vision of God. We don't understand how to partner with the kingdom of God. We are enemies against God when we go against God's anointed. So how do I manifest the will of God? I have to respect authority. I have to respect those that God positions. I have to respect those who God chooses, those who God allows to sit up in places. I have to have a reverence and a respect not to touch God's anointed. And we see in the life of Joseph, manifesting the will of God. Joseph, when Potiphar's wife tried to get Joseph to sleep with her, Joseph said these words, I cannot do this thing against God. What we don't see is Joseph saying, I can't do this thing against Potiphar. I can't do this thing against my master. It was more so a respect and an awe for his relationship with God. When you are one who desires the will of God, when you are one that will manifest the will of God, you, re you reverence and you respect your position with him. You respect your relationship with him. You respect the covenant that he brought you into. You respect the life, death, and burial of Jesus Christ to be able to manifest your individual position and assignment in God's great vision. You have to become one who reverences your covenant with God. Reverence your covenant to the degree that you don't want any sin to disrupt your divine fellowship and your divine flow in the divine life of God with the divine brothers and sisters within the divine life. You want to be one that you protect the covenant that you have. You protect your relationship. You protect it. It's valuable to you. You don't want anything to come disrupt the flow of God, the protection of God, the directions of God, the favor of God, the increase of God, the hand of God. You don't want anybody or anything to disrupt that 
flow. I cannot do this thing against God. I cannot go back on him. I cannot commit adultery. We see that over and over again where God referred to the children of Israel as the adulterous nation. They were committing adultery against God. They were going back on God. They were disrespecting God. They were breaking covenant with God, going after other gods. So when we will be ones who manifest the will of God, who bring into reality the assignment and the positioning of God. You may be called as an intercessor. You may be called as one who God is raising up for to mother people, to uh, teach children within the school system. You may be one that God is raising up to write books, to scribe, to sing, to write songs, whatever sphere of influence and whatever positioning God has given you. Become one who values the presence of God to the degree that you will not do this thing against God. You respect and value your covenant. You respect and value this precious thing that you have come into. You respect and value the baptism in the body of Christ to the degree that you understand that sin and offense to God disrupts the flow of God, disrupts and disconnects your relationship relationship with God. So then you become protective of what you have. Type in the comments, protect what you have. Protect what you have. So when you will manifest the will of God in your life, this is manifesting the will of God. Man, how do I manifest the will of God? How do I bring into reality my assignment? How do I bring into reality my position? So bring it into reality. You spend time. You spend time with God. Anything you value, you give it your time. Anything you value, you give it your time. I look at it like this. A newborn baby, when a baby is born, that baby needs your time. That baby needs to bond with you. That baby needs to get to know you. That baby is dependent on you. That baby needs to be around you. That baby needs to be taught by you. Anything you value, we see a, a newborn's a life as precious. They are incapable of fending for themselves. So you value their dependence on you. So what we want to do, and when we value and we want to manifest the will of God, we spend time with him. Spending time with God is spending time in fellowship with God, talking with God, dialoguing with God, reading the word of God, reading the word of God, connecting with those who share in the divine fellowship, those who share in the divine life. How do I know those who share in the divine life? Well, what are they talking about? What is the conversation about? Is the conversation concerning God? Is the conversation concerning the vision of God? Is the conversation surrounded by manifesting the will of God? Is the conversation surrounding supernatural events in their life? This is how we know those who share in the divine life. The dialogue is different. The dialogue is not on the latest gossip of the world. The dialogue is not on uh, Jamie Foxx and his sickness, this one and that one. Uh, who did one on social media? The divine life is what is God saying now? How is God positioning now? What is God revealed now? How is God leading us now? What is God doing next? That is what you'll begin to hear when you connect with those and you spend time with those who share in the divine life. God's great vision. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and you should all be working to manifest God's intention and God's will in the earth. You're doing this by your actions. You're acting in accordance with God's intention and God's actions. Jesus said this, I do what I see my father do. I say what I, um, what my father say. I do not 
do things on my own accord. Jesus said, I'm not a rogue agent. You are not a rogue agent. You are sharing in the divine life. You are sharing in the divine nature. You are sharing in the divine fellowship. I look at it like this in my imagination. Uh, because all of us house the very presence of the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to. And he's supposed to be in our lives to the full where we are led and guided by him. We discern those who are his because he lives in us. Come on. When he doesn't live in you and when his, he, he has not taken full residence in your life, you have a hard time connecting with those who share in the divine life. But when he can lead, guide your life, you connect with those who are the same nature, those who are working with one agenda, those who are working with one intention, one will. So if you're in my area, the Lord will connect you. If you're hearing this message, the Lord will begin to connect you. The Lord will begin to say, I want you to share in divine fellowship with this individual because they're gonna download to you. They're going to give you, they're going to partner with you. You need to partner with them so that you can get to where you need to go so that I can manifest something in your life. So we have to have spiritual sensitivity to, and, and, and spend time with God, desire and value the will of God, the word of God to be able to spend time with God and those that we share in the divine life with. When I do not spend time with the word of God, I won't get to know God's character. I won't know God. I won't know how he's acted in the past. I won't know examples of his sovereignty, examples of his deliverance, how he acted for others. This is the same God. The Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We should be able to look in the Holy Scriptures and find where God did something for the children of Israel, and he did it for you too. You should find types and shadows of your very life. You should see where God delivered Israel out of the hand of, and God will deliver you out of the hand of. But if we don't know this in the word of God, we won't know how to pray in accordance with the divine will. We won't know how to pray in accordance with the divine nature in order to manifest that in our lives. We can, when we read the word of God, we can go back in scripture and say, God, like you delivered David from the hand of Goliath, deliver me from these giants that I face. God, like you delivered Daniel in the lion's den, deliver me from all of these demonic individuals that are surrounding me who have full of the enemy and ready to devour my purpose, my destiny, my ministry, my family, my finances. We can begin to look back in the word of God and ex extract God's character and God's ways out of what he has done in the past. But if we don't spend time understanding this, we won't know God. And the scripture lets us know that those that know their God shall do great and mighty exploits. If I don't know these things about God, how can I act in uh, uh, great ways? How can I do great exploits? How can I do great things for God? How can I come out of sickness, out of disease, out of trouble, out of famine, out of these things? If I don't know the character, if I don't know God, how will I be able to act? I need these testimonies in order to reveal who God is. Because in my own experience, I may not see that. I may not have people that I can look to. I may not have a life that is being lived that I'm seeing the deliverance of God. I'm seeing the provision of God. I'm seeing the salvation of God. I'm seeing healing, signs, wonders, and miracles. I may not have that before me. So what I have to do is look in the word in the past. How has God delivered people from sickness in the past? How has God delivered people from destruction in the past? How has God delivered people out of poverty in the past? So when I spend time in the word, when I spend time with God, I will be, I will get to know his presence in the presence of the Lord. There is fullness of joy and there's pleasures at his right hand beyond measure. So the divine life is available to us through Christ, 
prayer and fellowship with God and fellowship with those that share the divine life will then manifest the will of God. And as you share with those who share in the divine life, they're able to speak into your life. They're able to share what the Father is revealing unto them. And you have a divine navigation system. So the last part of being able to manifest the divine life is be yoked to Christ. Type that in the comments. I need to be yoked to Christ. When you desire to manifest the will of God, you will become yoked to Christ. A yoke in the scriptures, we often hear of a yoke. Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Being yoked to religious dictates, being yoked to cultural dictates, being yoked to stereotypes, being yoked to race, of uh, the um, requirements of your race. All black people need to do this, or you need to do this if you're black. You need to do this if you're white. All of those dictates are yokes. Anything that you are yoked to, Anything that you are joined with, anything that you are under outside of Christ Jesus, following him, doing life with him, obeying him, following him. Remember, I talked about this last week. When you know Christ and when you um, spend time with Christ, you will know the leaders that you're uh, following. You'll, you'll see the manifestation of Christ in their life. You'll see the reality, the reality. I'm not saying what they say. I'm saying you'll see a reality of Christ. It will become real to you. Truth is reality. I will see this thing manifest. I will see this thing in its manifestation. So being yoked to Christ, when you desire God's will to manifest in your life, you will become unobligated to man. You will become unobligated. Now, now I'm not saying, I'm saying because when you, if you're hearing go rogue, you're a rogue agent. If you're hearing that, you're hearing me, you're hearing me wrong. What I'm saying is you have access to the divine life. In the divine life, there are divine connections. In the divine life, there are divine mentors. In the divine life, there are divine pastors, divine uh, churches that you're supposed to connect with. When I am yoked to Christ, I'm not yoked to my fleshly obligations unless those obligations are yoked to Christ as well. When I am yoked to Christ, he is my top priority. Following him and manifesting the divine life is my top priority priority. Type in the comments, I have a type priority. My type priority is manifesting the will of God. My type priority is manifesting God's agenda, his intentions, his motives, bringing into reality the prophetess that I am, bringing into reality the scribe that I am, bringing into reality the mentor to women that I am, the coach to women that I am, bringing into the reality the conference host that I am because I'm yoked to Christ. And wherever he leads me, whatever he's calling me to plant, however he's calling me to gain ground or gain territory, that's what I'm willing to do. He says, whoever is not willing to leave father or mother, sister or brother for my sake, you're not even fit for the kingdom of God. But if you leave those things, you'll gain more in the life to come. So when we are yoked to Christ, we will be ones who manifest the divine life, who bring into reality the will of God, who bring and pray into reality the word of God. So the divine life in the divine fellowship with others is we are in awe of him. 
We live with a respect and a reverence for him. We live every day honoring him. We live every day as if he is right here with us, that he is walking with. He told us this, behold, I will never leave you or forsake you. When you have an opportunity to do good, you do good. When you have an opportunity to do bad, you do good. Why? Because you have a reverence and a respect for God. You have a reverence and a respect for your relationship with God. You have a fear of God. You have a holy fear. He is a terrible God. I don't, he is, he's able to take my life like that. I'm not afraid of God, but I fear him because of his greatness, because of his bigness, because of his power, because of his majesty, because of what he can do. You know, the fact that people say, oh, God will forgive you. God is loving. God has grace. God has mercy. Yes, but he also has a judgment side of him. He also has a, you not going to live this life, Hezekiah. You're going to die earlier. Pack your bags. Get your things in order. You're about to die. He still has that, that posture to him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We just have Jesus Christ as the mediator and the mercy. But guess what? You don't know when your mercy has run out. You don't know when God is done with you. <laughs> you don't know when you fire. You don't know if your life has to end early. Come on. God judges people and ends their life early when they don't walk in full alignment and obedience with him. Okay. So one of the other ways that I am, I have learned to manifest the divine life. And you have to be spiritual. Type in the comments, I need to be spiritual. I need to learn how to live life in the spirit. When you live in the spirit, the scripture says, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Uh, to manifest the divine life, to manifest the will of God in your life, you have to learn to live life in the spirit. Live in the spirit. You won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. You won't go rogue. You won't walk out cultural norms. You won't become a man pleaser. You won't disregard prayer and fellowship. You won't leave out the word of God because you learn to live in the spirit. So when we live in the spirit, we learn how to follow the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who lives in our spirit, our regenerated spirit, and in our conscience, consciousness as a guide. He lives in our consciousness as a guide. So what we have to do is, is learn how to live from within out. Type in the comments. Learn to live inside out, not outside in. In our carnal nature, we're, we learn to taste things first. We learn to um, do, and then we learn. We learn to live outwardly first and then inwardly. But when you are moving and learning how to live in the spirit, you got to learn how to live inward, outward. So let me do, do this. Um, close your eyes if you're able to. Be quiet. And I want you not moving your mouth, not saying a word. I want you to say, Lord, I love you. Not moving your mouth, not saying a word. I want you to say, Lord, I love you. So what you just did, I didn't hear you. No, nobody should have heard you, right? You didn't hear me. We just live from the inside out. We spoke to God from our spirit. This is in the same way God speaks to us inwardly. So we have to learn how to exercise that inner life so that we can grow in our capacity to receive from God, to hear God, to follow the promptings of God. When you learn how to live inward, out, outward, 
you learn how to manifest the divine life because you become one who understands that the Holy Spirit lives in your regenerated spirit and he is leading you from the inside out. He is leading you into your destiny. He is leading you into the places of your divine appointment, your divine positioning. So you are leading, you are being led from the spirit man. Follow the spirit, not the flesh, okay? So in your spirit, what is your spirit man sensing? What is your spirit man inward? Because a lot of times we look for outward external evidence, but you have to learn how to live from the inside. And sometimes this takes practice. Sometimes you have to get quiet. Sometimes you have to learn how to shut things down. Stop talking so much. Um, um, start asking God questions and wait for the answers inwardly. That's that's something that you guys can put into practice this week as we are learning this. And we're going to uh, continue to talk more about this on Friday. But as this week goes on, start asking God questions inwardly. Maybe write them down even. Don't speak them out. But begin to ask God questions about your appointment, about your positioning, about manifesting his divine will in your life, your family, your uh, marriage, your job, your uh, a business, whatever aspect of your life. Start asking God questions inwardly. And maybe you need to write them down so you don't forget them. But don't speak those things out. Begin to just dialogue with God inwardly and wait for the manifestation of the leading of Holy Spirit. Sometimes in our regenerated spirit, when Holy Spirit comes in and he makes us alive unto God, he downloads within us the new creation we are created to be. He comes in and Jesus Christ makes his abode in us. We start to exhibit the character of God, the nature of God. We start to eat the word of God. Our minds are transformed. The transformation of our minds, guys, is just to bring our will and our emotions and to bring our soul into alignment with what's already done in our spirit. The transformation of the mind is not for your actions. The spirit is changed. The spirit is changed. So the transformation of the spirit, you just start to not want to do the things you used to do. You start to not want to do the things, go to places that you used to go. You start to not want to drink the, 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 the liquor. You start to not want to smoke the cigarettes. You start to want to read the word. The change is inward, not being transformed here. And then behavior modifications because you read the word. The word of God gives you the knowledge of what has already been done here. And with that knowledge, you can't be tricked by the devil. You won't believe the lies of the enemy because you know what the truth is in your mind. The enemy will try to come co to counsel your mind against what has happened inwardly. And if you don't read the word of God or have a correct perspective of God's word or read the word of God in error, you will go astray because the enemy will convince you of what hasn't happened here. Does that make sense? So then you begin to walk out in the spirit. You begin to follow the spirit. You begin to hear the spirit. You begin to hear the voice of Jesus. You begin to hear his voice. My sheep hear my voice in a stranger. They will not follow. Why? Because I have been changed inwardly. And because I have the Holy Spirit in me, the voice of God, when he speaks, he is going to lead me. He is going to guide me. He is going to direct my path. He is going to lead me out of danger. He is going to correct me. He is going to come after me. He is going to protect protect me like the shepherd that he is. So that inner witness of the Holy Spirit brings about the change. Okay. So get quiet, ask God questions regarding your, uh, the will of God for your life, regarding your career, regarding your family. Now, everything he may not answer within this week, but be an expectation Know that you have communicated with God and wait for him to answer you. 
Those of you that are watching this, maybe you're not in the will of God. You need to confess with your mouth, believe the Lord Jesus Christ has been risen from the dead by God the Father, and he is the son of God, and he is sitting on the right hand of the Father. You need to confess that with your mouth and believe it in your heart so that you can get in divine fellowship, in, the, in divine alignment. We cannot access the will of God without relationship. I'm going to say that one more time for the people way in the back. We cannot access the will of God without relationship. That's like trying to get intimate stuff from somebody and you don't have relationship. That's prostitution. That's when you go for prostitutes. You pay somebody or you're trying to get information, trying to get intel, intimacy out of somebody and you don't have relationship with that person. Or it's rape. <laughs> OK, so the inner witness of the Holy Spirit being led by your regenerated spirit, being led inward out, being drawn to the things that you should put your hands to. If if something keeps falling in your hands nine times out of 10, it is something that Holy Spirit is trying to get you to or manifest in your life. If it's something that you always hear. I see this on you, or I hear this, or um, you should do this. And it's something that you randomly always hear from several different people. That could be the voice of God trying to lead you there. But because you don't see the outside um, evidence, you don't see the outside evidence of that thing manifesting, you reject it, okay? You reject what God is saying because you don't see the outside. Remember, we're not living from the outside in. We're living from the inside out. So when God, when that check comes and you said, you say, I've heard that several times. Somebody just said that to me today. I just read this scripture. That is that inner witness confirming. That is that check in your spirit. That is that compass of the Lord guiding you to something, but you can reject it because of the outer evidence that you see. You don't have the resources. You don't have, know how it's going to happen. Instead of stepping out by faith and following the inner witness, following the guidance of the spirit, following the leadership of Holy Spirit, when we step into the, the divine will of God, hear me. God will manifest his will concerning you, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. So if it's by his spirit and his spirit dwells on the inside of others, his spirit is able to speak to others. His spirit is able to influence other others. I don't have to worry about all the external things that have to link up in order for me to manifest the divine will. All I have to do is follow and do what he tells me to do from my regenerated spirit. Okay, so here it is. When you have a regenerated spirit, let me help you. Your thoughts are sanctified. I'm not saying when you tipping and dipping, because when you're tipping and dipping, you're straddling the fence, you're lukewarm, you're trying to live as a double agent, or you're living as a double, double agent. You're in the world, but you're in the church. When you're living like that, it's hard to manifest the will of God because you're double-minded and you're unstable in all of your ways. So when you get to that place of devotion, when you get to that place where you value and desire and want and spend time with the Lord, your thoughts become sanctified. You start to take on the mind of Christ. Type in the comments, develop the mind of Christ. When you develop the mind of Christ, your thoughts are sanctified. Your thoughts thoughts are holy. Your thoughts are in accordance with his will. I'm not saying that you won't get attacked by the enemy because the enemy will attack you, but you learn how to wage war in your mind and you learn how to, um, um, be renewed in the spirit, in the nature of your mind. You learn how to bring your mind subject to the spirit of God. So you're developing those sanctified thoughts, okay? So your thoughts become sanctified. That inner peace, Colossians 3 and 16, and let the peace of God 
that comes from Christ rule in your heart. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Jesus said this, Father, let them know, let them be one as you and I are one. Let them walk in agreement as you and I are in agreement. Let them walk in unity as you and I are in unity. Let them walk in one accord with one mind, one heart, as you and I do this thing together. I'm seeing how we are walking this thing out, Father. I'm seeing how I do nothing unless you tell me to do it or unless I, I see you do it, or unless you show me that this needs to be done. I do what you tell me to do. I do what I see you do. And so um, when we become uh, settled and when, when we desire we'll start to experience peace at our borders. We'll start to experience the peace of God inwardly. Inwardly, when we're stepping into the divine will of God, there is peace that comes because you are fulfilling God's will for you. There is a satisfaction faction that comes inwardly. You won't be depressed. You won't wake up dreading the day. You won't wake up wondering and, 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 uh, feel lost and confused. You won't wake up stressed out because you are in the divine flow and in the divine flow of God, he gives you strength for the assignment. He gives you strength to carry out the will of God. He gives you strength. He sends people, his people to you to manifest that will. Now, when you are in a place where God is building you, where God is training you, where God is equipping you, you may have to go through some training for reigning. You may have to be tested. Some things may be withheld from you for a season to vet you, to see just how faithful you are, to see how much you love God, to see if you'll choose his will above finances or resources. There's a training and there's a reigning in God. There's a, when God is training us, you may experience warfare, you may experience opposition, but what will you do? Will you get down and pray even fervently? Will you seek the will of God even di more diligently? What will you do when opposition is there to sharpen you? to train you, to equip you, to build up your spiritual muscles, <clears throat> to teach you how to wage spiritual warfare. What will you do? So you can't negate, you can't be in God and say, well, it's just supposed to be peace. No, because if you experience peace, you won't know how to wage war. You won't know how to uh, defeat the enemy. You won't know how to stand in after done everything, stand. You won't have to, you won't know how to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You won't know how to be um, diligent and uh, vigilant with the calling, the destiny, the plan of God. So you have to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You have to endure in the rain, endure in the mud, endure in the floods, endure in the swamps, endure in the backlash, endure. You have to learn how to endure. Okay, so Jesus said, John 6 and 37, for I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And he also said in the garden of Gethsemane, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So there is a will that we can choose. We can choose our own actions. We can choose to act independently of God, or we can choose to submit to God. Now, here it is. Not every time is God's will, does God's will feel good, but it yields good. It doesn't feel good to the flesh all the time. It doesn't feel good to be quiet when somebody is uh, going off on you. It doesn't feel good to the flesh to um, let God deal with your adversaries. But in the spirit, it develops strength. It develops an inner renewing. It develops an inner 
strong place. It develops a confidence in God. It develops an inner stability. It develops an inner um, giant on the inside of you because your spirit man is growing every time you obey the truth. Your spirit man is growing every time you obey the word of God. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision of the night. And I will speak unto him in a dream. Oftentimes when we want to manifest the will of God, we got to hear. We got to open our spiritual ears, open our spiritual eyes and hear and see what the will of God is. So in manifesting the will of God, what prophetic words have you gotten? What dreams have you had? What is God speaking to you? What is your spirit man drawing you to? Remember that activity, getting quiet. Sometimes in order to understand what the will is, you got to get quiet. You may have to withdraw from some things. You may have to spend a season in quietness in order to drown out the expectations of man, stereotypes, culture, denomination preferences, um, people pleasing. You may have to draw away for a length of time in order to get all of those things out of your system. You may have to go fast and pray so you can quiet your spirit, so you can kill the flesh, so you can have intimacy with God and drown out all other desires. That may be an option for you. Whatever the spirit is leading you to do, you may need to do that so that you can find out what is the divine will of God. Lord, where is my position in your great vision? Father, what is your will for me in your great vision? What is my positioning? What is my assignment? How do I manifest that? Father, help me to increase my time of prayer and fellowship with the word. Help me to fellowship in the divine life and have fellowship with the divine family of God. Those who also carry the and house the Holy Spirit of promise. You have all of these things when you manifest the divine will of God for your life. You understand the divine life. You don't want to do anything to disrupt the divine flow. You don't want to have conversations. You don't want to come against God's anointed and God's elect. You don't want to do this thing against God. You want to have the divine flow of fellowship and the divine life that Jesus died for you to have, which was valuable. His life was valuable and he gave his life so that you can experience and manifest the divine will. Destiny travelers, I pray that you will begin to step into the divine will of God while you're en route to destiny. I pray that you will begin to be one that amps things up in your prayer time and in your fellowship. I pray that you will begin to be one that will manifest the divine will of God, get in the divine word of God, get into the, the divine flow of God, being in a church family, being in relationships where you can experience the divine flow of the spirit so that you can have conversations about God. Remember, God Jesus and the spirit, their agenda is to manifest God's will in the earth. And if you are in the divine flow, that's your agenda too, to manifest the divine will of God in your life. Now, how that looks and how you walk that out determines the desire you have, the will that you submit to him, and the divine life that you experience in him and with the saints. I love you guys with the love of the Lord. Thank you for watching Wednesdays and Fridays, 7 p.m., 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. I appreciate your time. Thank you guys. If you don't mind and you want to sow those hearts or those stars, hearts, share the broadcast. You can sow by sharing the broadcast. You can sow by sharing this to your networks, your friends. 
Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for um, joining me. Thank you for those that support the ministry by sowing to help me accomplish the divine will of God and manifest the divine will. If you're looking for books, I have books on my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com. I do coaching and mentoring as well um, as a manifestation of the will of God for my life. So you can look for those on my website, coaching and mentoring and books that I've written as a mandate from God on my website at www.touchdownsenterprise.com. I'm Sherry Downs. I love you with the love of the Lord and I love you with my love. Be blessed. See you Friday at 7, 15 a.m. Central Standard Time.